Three, two, one, go. Also, while I'm here, I would like to thank my viewers um, that were very mature with my last question of the day. Like, it was definitely a little sus making that question of the day about Blizzard. But everyone handled it properly. No one was really, like, aggressively attacking anyone. No one was, like, telling them, like... Some people did have strong opinions, but I don't... I feel like we still handled it well. Like, we took it healthily. Which is what I hope... For people to do. I asked that question because I trust my chat and the chat did not prove me wrong. Alright. And we have the treasure chest. Awesome, we got our leather weapon. Lots of pretty empty rooms. Or small rooms, I guess I should say. Not really that empty at all. When you consider it, but... Alright. They're just like small and have a treasure chest inside it. I thought I timed my shield block in time, but I guess I did not. Found the mech. Found book. Alright, just everything right next to each other. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So I think. Yeah, that's. <laughs> that's actually really good. Having everything right there. Um, we do want our teleport to the other areas close, but like even if not, we didn't detour much for anything, so it's probably still gonna be all right. All right, keep it moving. Ah, missed that. Oh well. Whew. Alright. Keep it going. Keep it chill. Do it well. Four hundred gold already. Which is a good amount of gold. Alright. So we're going to head up first. So while we have Lamech very visible, I have no concerns with fighting Lamech. And I do want to find this teleport here for the Sticky and Steady and just get it done with now. So from here we will teleport to Lamech. Because I only have to press up once. And then from Lamech we'll of course... Accidentally read the memory. Oh well. Don't think that wasted too much time. Just focusing on this boss fight.
There we are. Awesome. So, let's see. We have that taken care of. Lamech, book. Book is already found. So, we literally just have to find Axis Mundi. Wow. Yeah. I feel like that was good pathing. I feel like that had to be good pathing. And with that pathing, we also got good luck in the route that was given to us. I believe. And we do have an heirloom in just a bit, so it's a fair belief. There it is. Awesome, we even got a little bonus health on the way out. Yeah, I feel like my routing path that I took just avoided so many dead end rooms. So I feel like that was actually a really good route. Because even where I hit dead ends, they were just like really quick treasure chests. So why not? Ooh. Alright. Keep it moving. Alright. So yeah, as for like my balance of games, so I know this sounds insane, but I think I'm going to make sure I consistently am playing um, Magic the Gathering, because as long as Premier Draft Forgotten Realms is available, I want to get into, like this is the set for Dungeons and Dragons, and I am a big Dungeons and Dragons guy, so this is the set I want to get my D&D on, you know? Got it going. Got it still moving. There we are. Whew. through these rooms quite well. Nope. Did not gain enough height. Ooh. Okay, the viewers allow you to play a lot of MTG, and I speak for all the viewers. Technically, currently, you are the only viewer, so that's fair enough. Fair enough. No, no, no. I really... So, because of um, Forgotten Realms, I really do appreciate... Yeah, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, the Dungeons & Dragons set, is very much, like, makes me want to play as much Magic the Gathering um, as I can right now. So, yeah. Very happy that the that my viewers are, at the very least, not leaving because of it, you know? Go. 
Oh my gosh. Just instinctually throwing out attacks that are poor in that position. That's okay. If I deflected that attack, I actually would have fallen into the water. So that was actually... Well, I was not intentionally taking that hit. It actually was preferable to take that hit. Alright. Well, we survived two hits, so we're good. How long until the draft stopped giving you Forgotten Realms cards? So the Premier Draft um, is always the most current set. So they'll stop giving Forgotten Realms cards once the next set comes out. Which is um, the Return to Innistrad set. I don't remember what's called, but it's like something about a wedding. It has like some name about yeah, some name about wet wedding. Until that set comes out. All right, come on, get together, you two. Thank you. I appreciate it, Barrett. Lay out the leaf of peace, whatever you would call that. Alright. Fine, Alfar. We'll play with you for a bit. Because how far I walked forward there, I needed to get out. Alright. I need to get more height to get around that properly. Alright. So, I'm not sure with the damage decreases. I think I survived one hit in Kurgawal and Plateau. So, but yeah, Forgotten Realms should be giving out the cards for, like, the rest of the month at the very least. So, it's going to be a lot of Forgotten Realms for quite a while. Like, if I can basically focus on Magic the Gathering for my stream during just this set, I probably will. Uh... I'm not, I will state I'm not doing as well in this format's draft as I was doing in Strixhaven. Like, Strixhaven, I was doing insane. I think that allows me to survive an additional hit. I th emphasis on the word, I think, because I don't... The math of every little enemy has changed slightly. So... Ooh. Got myself a lily. Always nice. Just keep moving. Hey, Far Shores. Awesome. Okay. Need a little... Need one more lily. Have all my health. Have all my gold. Just need to find a lily and a maw. Which means time to start walking upwards in my roots. Alright. Point thing is the meat lantern in the next room will bring me back to full. So, yep. Whenever you get hit by one of those Aegis shell, um, one of those big bouncing shields, it takes two meats to get yourself back to full. 
So, as long as you get one hit and you have one meat left over on the ground, you're good. Alright. Whew. I was like, man, this is a lot harder to go through without double jump, but then I just realized I have the ability to just... I was gonna say, it, would go, it was a lot harder to go through the other way, but then I realized I have double jump, so it's not even that bad. I'll pop over here. Nope. At least glad we're getting these dead ends now. Alright, use my double jump, but not my dash. Faster to return to main menu. Uh, so this is why going back, like, grabbing book as a security isn't even that bad. Because right now I have to go back to the Kurgulon Plateau entrance. And if I had book, I can actually grab the damage boost for Nama. So that's actually a thing I could do here. Too late. The next heirloom's too far away. So let me find quite a lot of rooms. This one has been a little unfortunate because all that work to find them all, and we still haven't found a second lily. We did find Warden Weapon, though. Oh my gosh, that might just make up for all my time loss here. Yeah, all the lilies seem to be down in this bottom left corner. Two, if there's two lilies, that might as well be all of the lilies. Because, yes, there is one example, one separate, but you need to go down here anyways. So, Alright, second lily. Now we go open up Nama's room. We have ward and weapons, so we're actually going to have a good strength-based build if we want it. So we pick up the throne. We then go stuggy, stuggy and say, Nuts and Bolts is a bad sequel that takes the cake for me. Yep. So much so that Nuts and Bolts doesn't even feel like a Banjo-Kazooie game. Uh. Mine had to be, um, M Paper Mario Sticker Star. Paper, Mo the Sticker Star specifically. Um. Like, Super Paper Mario was a little like, huh. Like, it wasn't exactly Paper Mario, but it's like, I could learn to like that game. Sticker Star had enough, no redeeming value, effectively. Woo! Early Enoch. No more reasons to head upwards, other than that's the general route that they, they're gonna go. Found Gom Heads early. Wow. Make sure to do it while they're clumped together whenever possible. Whew. Awesome. Yeah, as long as you only have one, this boss is quite easy, which is why I so emphasize killing 
like focusing on like the trick of this boss is that they look exactly the same to try to make it hard for you to focus on one and once you realize that and that focusing is the solution a lot of it just kind of comes naturally saviors of kamigawa if that counts as a sequel yes yes um i will count i counted any it doesn't have to be a game to be a sequel um, I was getting ready for people to give sequels to movies that were bad. Um, like, I think the Matrix series, like, after the first Matrix, a lot of the sequels were not up to its... up to... on par, is what I've heard. But, I don't know much... I'm not really a Matrix man, so... Alright... If I could just find the heirloom, I'm gonna be coming back here. I'm see it already. Oof. Okay. Any given Call of Duty game, uh, I'm guessing the first one was like an inspiration in a lot of ways, and then, oof. Fair enough, Ragey. Fair enough. Alright, so we still need to find Murmur, but I think we return to main menu and go kill Nama with our Serrated Handles Bargain. Because, yeah, every time you get Serrated Handles Bargain, the game changes. It is suddenly, like, this, the single life becomes a lot more valuable once you get Serrated Handles Bargain, because it's just such a powerful effect. The ability to just double your damage, but at the same time, it's such a risk. Like, for the sake of speedrunnings, it almost... Oh, you put Prime 3 compared to its predecessors? Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I liked all of them, but I didn't... I kind of experienced them all at once. I didn't, like, have to wait for Corruption to come out and get all the hype, like... I had Prime, and then, like, by the time um, I actually played through Prime, because I just... We got it... How do I explain this? I got Prime a long time ago, and, like, I didn't play it when we first got it, because it was, like, more of my dad's game or something like that, and I just one day decided to play it and loved it, and so I just immediately was playing all the Prime games at once, and it was actually my first experience with Metroid at all. Hyper mode kind of acts as the difficulty. Oh, that explains it. I never used hyper mode. <laughs> I bet. Oh yeah, I bet. Just the ability to spend your health to deal ludicrous amounts of damage. I think there's even ways you can maintain hyper mode and stuff like that. Yeah. Spending um, one energy container is not really that expensive as you get later on in that. Oh, you become invincible during that? Okay, yeah, that's absurd. Yeah, I did not know you become invincible during hyper mode. If I knew that, I would have used that much more often. <laughs> Just use that. Now. Oop. That's a bit scary, but we found a hole. There we are. So by the time they use that move... We were on the next one. It's pretty great. So yeah, my least favorite move, the one that I always save my shield bash for, we used zero times during the first phase. Which feels great, actually. In case that wasn't clear for anyone. Just gonna go over here. Here. No damage. Thank you, Surrey Handles. Bargain. There are some attacks that can force you out of hyper mode, but they're infrequent. 
and when you enter corrupt hyper mode, you basically get free extra time in the state. Yep. You know, I never really... Ex I treat the, the, the hyper mode as, like, a danger weapon. I never treated it... I only used it when, like, the game asked me to. And by doing that, um... The balance seemed fine. Like, it... Was it too easy? I think the answer is no, but I could see the argument for it. Once you have... Once you ignore... Once you treat the hyper mode as a threat, as it was intended to be, instead of a free win button, that kind of ended up becoming. I mean, this is more damage. Alright. That is technically more damage, but it's such a bad relic in my mind. Because I just want to be able to still equip, like, Amaterasu's Sun or something like that if... Well, actually, Amaterasu's Sun... Bell. There we are. Bell. I'm going to equip that if I get the chance to it. To do so. Alright. Oh, that's lucky. That's not... have enough gold, I think. If this character dies, we get Warden Weapon, so we're not even bad on damage output. Because Warden Weapon is just like, you don't expect to get it, but when you get it, I think Drowned Weapon or Crescent Weapon? Yeah, I think Drowned Weapon, you are capable of just barely equipping and nothing else. So, that's also an option. But, yeah. Warden is the option you basically aim to get. Mario Luigi Partners in Time, yeah, compared to the first and the second, Partners in Time was definitely the worst of the um, three Mario and Luigi games. No denying that, no denial there. Or. Oof. Awesome. Just very close. Partners is the second, and Bowser's Inside Story was fantastic, though, but, yeah. Between Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story, Partners of Time just kind of sits there as... They took a shot. Oh! Misread what move they were using. Alright. Just don't mess it up. We still have Book as a heal, so as long as we don't mess this up, we're fine. Fight a little safe. No need to fear. Fear Villager Pawn is here. How's it going, Kraken Style? How's it going? Yep. 
Little Big Planet three to Little Big Planet two was a spectacular letdown. Mm. I only ever played the original Little Big Planet, so I have no idea. But I feel like this was a question that had so many different paths, which is why I took it. But yeah, just kind of funny. All right. Well, we grab the book to get ourselves to full health, and we see if we can make it to Irad on this life. Because if we can, this is what a one life run would look like. Going well? Good to hear, Cracket Style. By the way, I hope you're, it's going well for you too, fly, Flying Ragey. I realize that you just kind of came in and I just talked, you know? Alright. There we go. Fast as speed. Oof. Oh, because of that decision to throw that fireball, I do not have enough to grab the damage boost for Irad. So, guess we're just going without that then. Just continuing my last minute prep for the session one for your own campaign. Awesome, man. Yeah, awesome. I So, with a lot of creature stats, like, I have a concept for them. I don't really... You know, I need to start... I need to build some stat blocks, I think. That might be one of... Woo. Great. Woo. Oh. One more up. There goes about half my health. Thank goodness I didn't even have to face that enemy down there. Every enemy I don't have to face, the better. Going there to reset. Oof. Oh well. Windwall. Yep. We just grabbed the knight with Windwall. No notable traits, but this has a notable spell. And the notable spell is for strength based build. Which. Perfect, because we just got Warden Weapon as our equipment, so. Had to make an unbeatable one just in case specific actions are made. <laughs> Uh, I don't, like, I wouldn't say make it unbeatable, I'd say make it, um, just unreasonable to defeat. There is a, there is a slight difference between those two, I feel. To buy the Guess who forgot to buy the architect, everyone? Guess who forgot to Okay, I bought the architect. Guess who forgot to lock down the castle? Well <laughs> This was a good run. I literally did not lock down because I'm like, this is probably the last life. Like I think I can make it. And yep, trashed my own run. Oof. We might still get a good time because we had just such a good run at the start here. Oof. Because all we have to do 
is go find, um, go back to the Sun Tower, which, yes, it is two rooms separate, but there's a limited amount of things between those. Oof. Your character's kind of important for the plot? Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I recognize making stat blocks for, like, a character that's just important for the plot, but... Thanks for the chasers, guys. I appreciate them. Alright. Well. Back online. Just a little... Like, that was within PB range, and now we're not. But we're back online, at least. At least we have that. I didn't know if that was a coyote jump or taking my double jump, so I wanted to be quite safe. Alright. Alright, we have a new route. Let's see if we can f how quickly we can figure it out. few more over the after that. Yep, one more above this. Uh That actually helped a lot. Dead though. Oof. Did not make that easy there. Was this the reset? There we go. Alright, well this is a no architect runs people, so I'm not sure if that counts for a different category, but this is a no architect run. And I have successfully done this without um without taking a hit before, so maybe we just do that again.
played around in there too long. That was my mistake entirely. Alright. Well, we have the castle. We have that place locked. Disattuned. Okay. We have disattuned. And we have a duelist with the precise... Oh, right. Disattuned reduces their health. Then I should have probably stuck with Knight. Oh, well. And yeah, the reason I didn't even bother um, walking down is because Knight, I was going to grab Duelist anyways, which was going to give me the extra class. And I do think Disattuned Duelist is going to be good enough that I don't even need to grab the lockdown. Womp, womp, womp. Fair enough. Yep. If I did that, that would have been a um, no architect run, which would have been awesome. Just make a mistake, just do a no architect run instead. <laughs> would have been awesome. Would have been so freaking awesome. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm glad Sully doesn't have spikes because that would be super scuffed. Yep. Fair enough. Alright. Whew. I think that was still a decent run. The. The Story Hounds bargain allowing for the quick kill on the Mon Enoch definitely gave us a lot of time. So I think we still keep it sub 50. 4145, yeah! Look at that! Not just sub 50, almost sub 40. I think if I killed on that, yeah, if I killed on that second life, that would have been a sub-40 no architect, which feels good, which feels good. Good job, Sir Mar Mauricio. Mauricio, good job. 